One of the important things that you have to do to be successful in any calculus course is to know your differentiation formulas. This is very important not only in differential calculus but also in integral calculus. So you have to find a way to remember all your formulas as quick as possible. Today I am going to share with you some tips that will help you remember these basic formulas quickly. These formulas include derivatives for exponential and logarithmic functions and derivatives of trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions. Let us use the following notations for the derivative of a function f. So this is f prime. So this is the prime notation or Lagrange notation. So the first uh, differentiation formula it tells us that the derivative of any constant with respect to x is equal to zero. If you know the definition of the derivative of a function, so let's say dy over dx, this is just equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of the change in y over change in x. So if you're given a constant function, we know that for any change in x, there is no change in y. So therefore, this is always equal to zero and limit of a constant is just equal to the constant. So therefore, the derivative of any constant with respect to x is equal to zero. The second one, it tells us that the derivative of a power function, x raised to n, n is any real number, is equal to, you bring down the power, so that is n, and subtract 1 from the power. So it should be clear from here that the derivative of uh, x with respect to x is equal to 1. And if you think of this as separate entities, it is clear that it is equal to 1. But if you have, let's say, a function, y equal to x. So whatever the change in x is, that will be the change in y. So this delta y over delta x will be just delta x over delta x. So it is limit of 1 again as delta x approaches 0. Limit of a constant is just the constant. So the derivative of x with respect to x is equal to 1. But of course, we can use this uh, formula even for n equals 1. So the derivative with respect to x of x, we bring down the 1. So that will be 1 times x raised to 1 minus 1, which is 0. And we just consider x raised to 0 equal to 1 for any x. And we'll get derivative of x with respect to x is equal to 1. The next formula tells us that when we take the derivative of a constant times a function, we just copy the constant and multiply it with the derivative of the function. So constant times f prime. And then the next one, so taking the derivative of a sum, sum of two functions is just equal to the sum of the derivatives and the derivative of difference of two functions is equal to the difference of their derivatives now for the product in this case the derivative of a product is not equal to the product of derivatives because if the derivative of a product is equal to product of derivatives then this will imply that derivative of all functions will be zero because uh, if you have a, uh, for example, any function, then any function can be written as 1 times that function. So if you use derivative of a product equal to product of derivatives and the derivative of 1 is equal to 0. So it will always give you a derivative which is equal to 0. So that doesn't make sense. So in this case, the derivative of a product of uh, two factors is equal to sum of two terms in this case. So this is equal to f times the derivative of the second factor plus the second factor times the derivative of the first factor. To get the terms here, just remember that you have to take the derivative of one factor at a time. So here we take the derivative of the second factor first, plus in the second term we take the derivative of the first factor. Now we move to the derivative of a quotient. So also derivative of a quotient is not equal to quotient of derivatives because if that is true, then the derivative of all functions will be equal to zero. So how do we find the derivative of a quotient? 
So it is equal to the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, f, minus numerator times the derivative of the denominator, so f times g prime, all over denominator squared. So the way I remembered this when I was in college is using the mnemonic derivative of high over low. So derivative of high over low is equal to low d high. Low times the derivative of the high, which is the numerator minus high d low. D means derivative. High times the derivative of the low over low low. So that is low squared which is the square of the denominator. Now, another way to remember this derivative of a product and derivative of a quotient is using, so as you can see, the derivative of a product, product of two terms, okay, product of two functions, is equal to sum of two terms. And to get the terms, you just have to take the derivative of one factor at a time. So you may do it this way. So first, take the derivative of the first factor times uh, the second factor and then plus just copy the first factor times the derivative of the second factor. Now you can actually extend this for example to a derivative of a product of three functions product of four functions and so on and what you have to do is only take the derivative of one factor at a time so you may take derivative of f times g times h it is just equal to first let's take the derivative of f times g h plus now take the derivative of the second factor g prime so that is times h and then plus f times g times h prime so that is the technique in finding the derivative of a product of functions. And if you use the derivative of a product in this order, first take the derivative of the first factor times the second factor plus the first factor times the derivative of the second factor, it's easy to remember the derivative of a quotient because in this case, the derivative of f over g, it is just equal to the derivative of this product f prime of g but you change the plus sign to minus sign so minus f times g prime all over the square of the denominator and this is one way to remember this derivative of a quotient let's now move to uh, derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions so we have these uh, derivatives so how do we remember these derivatives so usually uh, some students are confused uh, with the derivatives of a to the x and log base a of x because of the presence of l and a in the derivatives. But to remember this one, if you write the two formulas next to each other, if you see the formula for the log base a, it's like the a is written lower okay, compared to this uh, a to the x. So just put the ln a in the denominator. Otherwise, if you don't have the log, so it is like the a here is placed higher compared to the a in this log base a. So you put the ln a on top. It's in the numerator. And if you know these two formulas, it's easy to recall the other formulas for the derivatives of e to the x, ln x, and then ln of absolute value of x. Because in this case, we know that uh, ln e, okay, ln e is equal to 1. So therefore, if a is equal to e here, so you have here derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x, ln e, but ln e is 1, so it is just equal to e to the x. And also, if we use this formula in the case wherein the base is equal to e, so just remember that ln x is just log base e, okay, log base e of x. So therefore, when we use this formula, when a is equal to e, we'll get 1 over x ln e. Again, ln e is equal to 1, so that is 1 over x. And this uh, formula is also true even if we replace this x by absolute value of x. Probably you'll learn this uh, additional formula after you learn chain rule.
Let us now discuss the derivatives of uh, trigonometric functions. So here, derivative of sine x is cosine x, derivative of tangent x is secant squared x, derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x, derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x, and derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x cotangent x. Now, to remember these formulas, just keep in mind that if the function starts with a c, its derivative has a negative sign. Okay, so it starts with c, starts with c, and starts with c. And to remember these uh, four formulas, it's very important to keep in mind the following pairs. So you have the tangent x, and then secant squared x, and the pair cotangent x, and negative cosecant squared x. Because in this case, the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x, and when you take the derivative of secant x, just uh, take the remaining factors here, which is tangent x times secant x. So that is the derivative of secant x. Also here, derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. Now when you take the derivative of cosecant x, it's only the remaining factors here, which is negative cosecant x times cotangent x. Let's now move to our last set of formulas. So we have here derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions. So how do we remember these six formulas? So actually, it's enough to remember three of them. And just keep in mind that if you have the co, okay, just take the negative of the derivatives. It's like cosine inverse. Just take the negative of the derivative of the sine inverse cotangent inverse, just take the negative of the derivative of the tangent inverse and cosecant inverse, just take the derivative negative of the derivative of the secant inverse. Now, how do we remember these uh, three formulas? If you have the S here, you have the square root in the formula. So here you have a square root of 1 minus x squared, but in this case, it's a square root of x squared minus 1. But knowing how to derive the formula is really helpful, just in case you forget uh, these formulas. Just keep in mind here that uh, derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 1 over the derivative of x with respect to y. So let's say for formula 1, for the first formula, if you think of the sine inverse x as y, then here we have sine of y equal to x. If you take the derivative of x with respect to y from this equation, you'll get cosine y. And cosine y is actually square root of 1 minus sine squared y from our Pythagorean identity. And we only take the positive square root because in this case, the value of the sine inverse x is only from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So in that case, the cosine is actually greater than or equal to 0. So we have here a positive square root. Or just keep in mind that for this uh, inverse trigonometric functions, you have the negative signs. For this other three, you always have the positive derivative. Similarly, we can easily derive the second formula by letting y equal to uh, tangent inverse x. And in this case, uh, tangent y is equal to x. And using this derivative of y with respect to x equal to 1 over dx over dy. So when we take derivative of x with respect to y here, we'll get secant squared y. But what is secant squared y? Secant squared y is just 1 plus tangent squared y. So you'll get this formula, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And in the third formula, if you let y be equal to secant inverse x, so you'll get here secant y equal to x. But when you take the derivative of x with respect to y, then you'll get here secant y tangent y. And of course, we can write this secant y here as x. And then tangent y is plus minus the square root of secant squared y minus 1. 
Now, because of the plus minus, we need the absolute value of x here. Because if you know the graph of your secant inverse function, it is an increasing function. So the derivative must be positive. So if we don't put absolute value here, so this derivative may be negative, which is incorrect because the graph of a secant inverse function is an increasing function. Now, what if you don't know this uh, equation that the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 1 over the derivative of x with respect to y? You can still derive these formulas by implicit differentiation. So let me show you. So here, again, you let y be equal to sine inverse x. So take note of the restriction here. The y values are in the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So here, sine y is equal to x. You take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So using implicit differentiation, you'll get cosine y times the derivative of y with respect to x equal to 1. And now you'll get derivative of y with respect to x equal to 1 over cosine y. And because of this restriction, you know that the cosine y can be written as, in this case, uh, this must be sine, right? So that is square root of 1 minus sine squared y, which is equal to sine y is equal to x. So that is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. And uh, for derivative of tangent inverse x, so again, if you let y equal to tangent inverse x, so here y is between negative pi over 2 to, uh, and pi over 2. So tangent y is equal to x. Take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. You'll get secant squared y times derivative of y with respect to x equal to 1. So dy over dx is equal to this expression. But using our identity, Pythagorean identity, we have secant squared y equal to 1 plus tangent squared y. And using this equation, we'll get 1 over 1 plus x squared. Lastly, let me show the derivation of the derivative of secant inverse x. So again, y is equal to, uh, we let y equal to secant inverse x. And in this case, the restriction is that y is in 0 to pi excluding pi over 2. Because in this case, x is equal to secant y and secant y is 1 over cosine y. So cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0. So again, we take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. We'll get secant y tangent y times the derivative of y with respect to x equal to 1. So dy over dx is equal to this expression. But we can write tangent y as plus minus the square root of secant squared y minus 1. So therefore, changing secant y to x, we'll get plus minus x square root of x squared minus 1. Now, if you know the graph of the secant inverse function, it is an increasing function. So the derivative must be positive. So in this case, x can be negative because your y is could be in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2, this angle y here. So to make sure that the derivative is positive, we need to put an absolute value for x. So we have here derivative of y with respect to x equal to 1 over absolute value of x square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, that's everything I have for you today. If you enjoyed the tips that you learned in this lesson, please don't forget to hit that like button below and share this to your friends. I release new videos every week, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to do so to learn more strategies in math. Again, this is Dennis of KO Math. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.